Dan, you've been trading the market for like 30 years. Have we found the bottom? Well, I, look, Alex, I was on your show uh, on Thursday, and I said, you know, the, the, the market stops going down when the selling stops. But there is reason to believe that the selling is going to stop. Um, there, there has been, I've been trying for the last two weeks to find this connection between the hedge funds that have been selling oil and the algorithmic boxes that have been selling oil and something else in the market, either the dollar, some other FX, something in the equity market, some other asset, and I can't really find it. But what okay. I do find, and you sent it on this um, previous in a previous uh, segment, that there's been a lot of redemptions from hedge funds. And these hedge funds are being forced to deliver back capital to investors on November 15th. So yesterday's kind of move, that $2.5 move where there really wasn't much in the market to spark it, felt to me like this kind of capitulation move, this kind of last kind of gasp of hedge funds trying to raise capital for what will be an enormous number of redemptions that are going to come in in the next two days. You make a great point, Dan, that it's sort of that technical and what will happen after that redemption date happens, like next week will we see a bottom here. But I do want to point out, and you brought this up to me last week, if you come inside the Bloomberg, it's net long positions for WTI as well as Brent. Obviously, there's been a nice little wash out there. But Dan, we're not near the levels that we saw in 2015 and 2016 when we had other oil price sell-offs. Does that tell you something? Well, look, you know, this is like, this is this is a, like a microcosm of my career in oil, where the financial <laughs> indicators, the financial inputs to the market, just overwhelm everything uh, that is fundamentally going on. Sure, there is an enormous increase in U.S. production that is going on, but let me tell you this: the last week over week um, um, a result from the EIA of 400,000 barrels in a week is not a production increase. It's black magic. It didn't happen. You can't increase production by 400,000 barrels in a week. But this is just going into what is uh, the, the feeling and the, the impetus of selling that is driving a market down right now. It doesn't snap back immediately. When these kinds of moves happen, when you get this kind of washout in, in the hedge funds, in financial players, it takes time for the confidence to reemerge in the oil market. So, no, I don't think that this market snaps back at this point, any, and, you know, not quickly anyway. Well, and to your point, Dan, uh, if you come inside the Bloomberg one more time, at CCRV Go in particular, uh, it's looking at the amount each contract has moved over the last couple weeks. And I point that out, Dan, because the beginning of it is all going to be about 2019 and December 2018. Most of those contracts all moved at $9 or almost $9. That tells me that the market is concerned that once you get the pipe neck bottleneck issues resolved in the Permian, we could see a flood when we're already seeing record production in the U.S., Right. You're talking, you're talking about the curve, and the curve has gone definitely from a backward data to a contango state. But those spreads have not really moved to the degree that they probably should, considering that the oil market has gone down $20. I think the concerns, look, again, you're pulling so much product out of the Permian now. Of course, there are going to be... A, a, there's going to be better efficiencies when pipelines free up. But I don't know how they're getting it out of there. They're getting it out of there by truck, train. They're getting it out of there by mule. I don't know how they're getting it out of there, but they're getting it out of there. The numbers are astonishing. The amount of production that's coming out of West Texas is astonishing. So, yes, the pipelines do get freer, so there's a, a better route for that oil to get out. But it's getting out now. That's not really going to be the issue. It's what's been going on in terms of the supply out of West Texas. When is that increase going to stop? Now, mm -hmm. they have increased 2 million barrels in a year. I would have thought half that would have been incredible. Okay, so there's a point where this kind of stops. And then, of course, OPEC comes in in the December meeting, and they're already saying they're going to cut half a million barrels. I think they're going to go to a million barrels. They have a lot of reasons to stabilize this market. They don't need $100 oil today. They don't need it in the first quarter of 2019, but they do need it somewhere down the road. So I think they're going to do what's necessary to offset whatever it is that U.S. production is putting into the market. Right they now. definitely don't want 55.